Hi everyone. Today's topic for of discussion is fatigue and the creep failure. We'll go through it. What is fatigue? We'll go through what is creep, and we'll understand the difference between fatigue and creep failure. So, what happens in fatigue failure is the load on a component at certain level or at certain position is varying with time. It is important to understand as the time changes, the load also varies, and that is due to the cyclic loading which is happening. So, if you see here, it is on the positive side, it is on the negative side. So, sigma value is going from positive to negative. We can say it as a, uh, as a load reversal which is happening there. And the failure which occurs due to that is called the fatigue failure. Now, if you see 90% of the time, the failure which occurs is due to the fatigue failure. Okay. And why it is a fatigue failure and how it happens is the first thing which happens here is the crack is formed. The crack is formed. So at a very micro level, the crack is generated. In the next stage, if you understand, the crack growth takes place. So I'm just exaggerating the things here. So the crack growth takes place. If you zoom in here, you can see the crack must be something like this. So the crack growth takes place. And in the third stage, the failure will occur. So the failure or the fracture will occur. So it will get fractured something like this. Okay, so the component is has failed here. So these are three stages. So uh, we know that there is something called as SN curve, which is used to calculate the life cycle of the component. How the SN curve is plotted is an interesting thing to be seen. So what, how it is done is, it is being subjected, so a component being subjected to large amplitude test cycles. So if there is a blade, which is, uh, let's say a windmill blade uh, is being subjected to test cycle. So, so they will subject the windmill blade to the highest magnitude of its uh, cycle from positive to negative and they'll observe when the failure will occur. Now, to plot the curve, we get a scattered structure. So we get scattered points like this. Okay. And we draw a curve which best fits the scattered points. But what happens is if we consider the scattered points curve only, we are increasing the failure chances by 50% because we are not capturing everything which is being shown here. So to best fit what it is done here or all the SN curves what they are done they are shifted by two factors below and what it does is this 50% failure is brought down to 1% so all the SN curves are made in this fashion so it is a point to be noted next thing is if we consider a typical SN curve okay so this region is very important so in this region if a component lies it is said it is said that the component has infinite life okay so we try to put our components in this range but every time it is not possible and we get a finite life of a component we understand here we get 
a finite life a component and every time the engineers try to go for a finite or infinite life now in, in the fatigue there are two types of fatigue which occurs there is a low cycle fatigue which is called lcf and there is a high cycle fatigue which is called hcf what is a low cycle fatigue low cycle fatigue typically i'm not saying every time but low cycle fatigue typically occurs in the elastic region high cycle fatigue typically occurs in the plastic range now how the lcf and hcf are defined they are low cycle as the name suggests they have high loads and low number of cycles so in other words instead of oh sorry in other words instead of loads if i say it has high sigma value and low number of cycles but in hcf if we particularly talk about they have low magnitude of loads and high life cycle and due to the high loads and the alternating loads the failure which occurs is called as low cycle fatigue and because of the low loads and the alternating stresses the failure which occurs is called high cycle fatigue now it is interesting to see and we have to understand it is a logarithmic function so it is a logarithmic function so whatever curves we are drawing whatever life cycle we get it is a logarithmic function okay so if we are drawing an sn curve on a, or we are drawing an alternating stress strike diagram here there are certain values so this is my sigma average value this is my sigma max value this is my sigma min value and this is the sigma range value that is sigma r value now sigma m is calculated as sigma a plus sigma r divided by 2 if we have sigma m value understand it here very carefully if we have sigma m value equal to 0 if we have sigma m value equal to 0 we can calculate some finite value for the life cycle if sigma m value is not 0 okay sigma m value is not 0 we cannot calculate i mean i'm not saying we cannot but it is very difficult to calculate a finite value of a life cycle so what is what is done at that time and how we typically get a sigma um, non uh, uh, zero value is as you are saying whatever sigma max value is there it is in the same uh, positive side so whatever sigma positive we are getting sigma min is nothing but the negative magnitude of it but in certain cases let's say this is sigma max and this is sigma min these values are not exactly reversing or they have, the magnitude is not same and because of that we get a non-zero sigma m now we can calculate sigma m but the time and the money which is required to calculate sigma m is very high so typically what is done here we calculate the sigma or what we do instead of calculating the life of the component we see that whether the component has infinite life or not so we use goodman diagram gerberg diagram and the soderberg diagram typically goodman is good to go i mean goodman is typically used most of the time there are these three uh, i'm so sorry there are 
these three curves are used. So this is the curve bud. This is Bridman. And the third one is the shorter bud. So what a Goodman diagram does is it adjusts the endurance limit to account for the mean value and in this case for the Goodman diagram and even for the Gerberg diagram we use the ultimate tensile strength of the material and for the Soderberg diagram we use the yield strength of the material now instead of calculating uh, the SN curve we are actually calculating the amplitude of Sigma and the Sigma you know, in this way so what we do is if we are uh, you know say checking for a Goodman diagram we see that if the components component lies below here it has infinite life and if it lies here it is it does not have infinite time so this sums up and it gives up the brief idea about uh, fire, uh, the fatigue analysis now the other thing to understand is what is uh, creep what is creep so creep is nothing but the failure of material which occurs during uh, i mean after the part is being loaded with certain loads let's say we are looking at our component of interest is this there is some other component which fits over here and there is another component something like this which sits over here now the loads which are being exerted by this component are transferred and translated at this area okay now these are always in contact with each other throughout its life okay now the failure which is occurring due to constant loads being exerted on the component at certain location that is called creep understand it. I am highlighting here word constant in fatigue in fatigue the loads are cyclic they are varying with time but in creep they are not varying with time they are constant throughout the life and the failure which occurs due to this is called the creep failure now the creep failure has three sections the first is the primary, secondary, and it is tertiary. So it is in typically in the elastic region. It is just started with the plastic region, and the fracture which happens is totally in the plastic region. So that's what the creep failure is. If we talk about fatigue failure example, um, we know that if we are holding a wire, metal wire in our hand and if you want to break it here we have a wire like this what we'll do we'll hold uh, you know this is my thumb we'll hold the component something like this and what we'll do we'll bend the component in this direction and in this direction so at the granular level what we are doing is we are putting the component in cycles of tensile and compressive loading and because of that the failure occurs now if the sigma m value is in tensile and if it is in compression tensile loading is very dangerous compared to compression because we talked about the crack which is formed here consider the tensile loads are acting here so they will open up this crack they will open up this crack from its original position to the other but in compression it will not happen but in compression the stress concentration will happen at the 
each of it. Okay, so there is that difference. So this sums up about gives you a brief idea about what is fatigue and what is creep. We'll discuss more topics in our upcoming videos. Keep learning. Do like, share, and subscribe this video. Thank you.